Hi. Okay, now, before I start this video at all, there are trigger warnings, okay? Trigger warnings for eating disorders, for self-harm, for being trapped in places, things like that. So just watch with care. So, hey guys, um, this is a very important video I'm making because... It is about a hospital, which we all think is terrible and it needs to be shut down. So here I am telling stories to try and get this place shut down because it is not okay. Okay, I'll just dive right in with some of the things that I went through there. Okay, the safety clothes. Now, safety clothes, I, I get they're important. They, like, they avoid people from tying ligatures and things, but... These were a t-shirt and shorts worn in the winter and when we got secluded the seclusion window was jammed open and the winter air would come in and when you first go in there you're in such a state you don't really care you're just trying to get out but once you've calmed down a bit it's freezing and I'd be begging them to let me out I'd be saying I'm freezing cold please let me out please let me out and they wouldn't let me so I'd be stuck cold and a couple of times I'm, a, I'm embarrassed to say it but I did wet myself from fear and they had a go at me for it which is not okay <laughs> because I didn't wet myself on purpose um one time I had stolen a fork they're just plastic forks and instead of asking me politely for the fork they removed all of the other patients from the dining hall um, and they restrained me and I was trying to get out so they twisted my arm right round and it hurt like a bitch um, so I was screaming I was like get off me get off me get off me and they twisted it even further um, I genuinely thought they were going to snap my arm they secluded me pretty much every day um, just because I'd been messing with the cameras because I had this fear that the cameras were getting hacked by the spirits and they were gonna spy on us they were gonna spy on everyone i thought i was like helping everyone by doing this and sometimes i was getting them to try and get the wires out to electrocute myself and things like that it wasn't very good so yeah they would restrain me and put me straight into seclusion and i'd be in there for hours and hours and hours um which isn't as bad as other people i know people have been like Seeing it's seclusion for weeks and months and it's just seclusion is not okay it doesn't it doesn't help you get better it just fucks you up now i had problems with my eating this is a trigger warning eating disorder stuff um and i used to purge a lot um which is not great and one time I was purging and I was on one to one. My one to one was doing nothing about it. Um, which obviously I was happy about at the time because it meant I could do it. But looking back now, I think they should have stopped me. And one of the. I was coughing because I was choking on my vomit. And one of the other staff members came in and said, Why, why is he in there coughing? Um, this isn't okay. Open the door. So I was purging and went, Alright, she has the right to do that and close the door and just let me finish which I don't think is okay also I forgot to mention how badly they treated me for being transgender if you don't know about that I'll put a link to my previous video in the description and that talks about what it's like being transgender in a psychiatric unit and I basically am talking about this one so yeah okay so that's basically my my little story so I'm going to tell you a few things that happened to my friend. I'm going to leave her anonymous, but if she wants to come out and say that it's her, then that's that's her choice. Um, they used to iron her pretty much every night just to get her to sleep. Because um, she would struggle at night time, which is not her fault. Basically, IMing is where they inject you, usually in your bum. Um, and they inject you with, like, different medications usually to calm you down generally iming is just like lorazepam diazepam all the apams <laughs> and they and they calm you down they help you calm down but they're not to be used all the time when they're not needed 
you know, you only they're a last resort, so that's not okay. They would hold her on the toilet even when she was okay because she was on, I think she was on one to one or two to one. I mean, where's the privacy? Because when you're on one to one, you don't get any privacy. They watch you on the toilet, they watch you in the shower, they watch you when you're eating, they watch you when you're doing everything, they watch you when you're sleeping. It's it's not good. But again, I understand being on one to one or two to one or three to one or four to one or five to one um, is important for some people, but they've got to, you know, give them a little bit of privacy sometimes, you know, trust them. Like if they're on the toilet, you can stand outside the door and talk to them the entire time to make sure they're not doing anything bad. They'd put her food into plastic cups and leave them on the floor for her, which is just disgusting. Okay, and now things that affected everyone, um, we'd be forced into education no matter what our mental state. If we were really struggling that day, we just wanted to be on our own, relax, but no, we were forced to do education, which is not great. Um, we'd be locked in the day area all day. Um, even like you see people having like flashbacks, people having panic attacks, and they were they were told to stay in the day area. You weren't allowed to go to your bedroom because, like in in the hospital I'm in now, if you're struggling, you can go to your room, you can relax, um, or you can go to the quiet room. Like, but th this place during the day in the in the school day because it, it was a adolescent unit um you were to stay in the day area um you had to ask for water there was no water machine or anything the, the day area was really small and uncomfortable and clinical looking it wasn't nice we rarely ever got any fresh air even though there was like a big door like on the, the side of the day area they, they wouldn't open it it was like closed pretty much all the time and we rarely got to speak to our families and I couldn't see my little brother because at the time he was really young he still is he's under 18 and they wouldn't allow under 18s to come and visit us so I never got to see my brother the whole time I was there and it was devastating because I love my little brother so that's all the stories I've got if you have been to Kent House Hospital, please, please, please tell your story because we want to get this place shut down. It's not okay what they're doing to patients. They treat us like shit. And I don't want anyone else going through that. So thank you for watching. Tell your story. Be heard. Bye.